Welcome to the first video from my new home office slash game room slash VR room slash echoey room. Bring high performance gaming and small footprint together with the all new Corsair One. Available with up to an Intel 9th Gen 9900K processor and an RTX 2080 Ti, this small PC is capable of big things. Convection assisted cooling with separate loops for the CPU and GPU means the Corsair One sucks in the best way possible. To see our review of the new Corsair One i160, click the link in the description below. So we got a few things we're gonna try and get done today and forgive me for not wearing my lav mic, we are using an on-camera mic so you might hear Phil trip on things, you might hear some handling noise and some reverb. I'm sorry about that, clearly this room is not like my old studio where it had bass traps and all that stuff to stop the echo, so I'm sorry. But uh, I have, I don't get a lot of time to game. And so when I do like to game, the problem was I had my VR set up, which was also my simulator set up, and then I had Skunk Works and they were in different rooms and it was kind of a pain in the ass. So my whole goal with this room, which is about a 12 foot by 12 foot room, it's not big, it's not small, it's got a high ceiling. The first thing is I do have a ceiling fan in here because I have like 10 foot ceilings in here. So as you can see, the first issue I wanted to make sure I wasn't gonna have is that I could have a ceiling fan in here to keep things nice and cool when I'm gaming, but when I'm in VR, I'm not gonna stick my hands in the fan. So as you can see, we clearly have a lot of clearance because I am almost six foot four with a long reach. So that's kind of nice. Um, this is clearly my Butter Revolution. You guys have seen this in other videos. We've talked about the Fanatec setup. So I'm not gonna talk about this again, like what it is. There are videos, you can go and check them out. I would say I would link them below, but I always forget. Just go to my channel and search Fanatec or Simulator and this will come up and you'll see more about that. But my desk, if you guys haven't noticed, I like to use dining room tables as desks because of the size of Skunk Works and this being a Case Labs SMA8 and the size of it, I need big area to put things on. To kind of give you a perspective of how large this actually is for a desk, this is a 34 inch ultra wide the LG um, GK950F, which is the one that I said that I was like in love with, HDR and all that goodness, here it is. It's on an arm that uh, we'll, sh we'll show you more in a second. So this is the setup right here. It's fully cable managed. We'll kind of show you that in the back. And I need to get my Vive set up. Once I started racing in VR, I can't really go back. But I'm also thinking because my coax is right here for my direct TV, I think I'm gonna put a TV right here too. Why the heck not, right? But if you look over here, this area, other than crap on the floor, there's nothing here. Normally I would think about putting a couch or something for hanging out with friends or watching TV in my own office, but I'm conflicted because if I'm gonna be doing scale, room scale VR, this is actually a pretty big area. Like if I took the chair and scooted it to the closet, cause it is on, on sliders, so I can slide it around, then I've got a pretty big area for a bedroom to do room scale VR. So I'm kind of conflicted on that. I don't think I'm gonna do anything with that yet, but I, I obviously wanna decorate the wall with some of my racing photos, things that from various track events and whatnot, and that's gonna be the setup. But what I started to talk about earlier, and the reason why I didn't get to get much gaming done is because when I would go to Game on Skunk Works, it's like, okay, updates are needed. Fine, that would take time, load the game, needs updates. Then I'd want to play VR, and that was in that Node 605 setup I had with the Watercool 1080 Ti and all of that. That got the least amount of use. So then I would go to play Project Cars or something with our racing buddies, and it's like, hold on guys, Windows update. Hold on guys, Project Cars update. And now we're stuck in update limbo where it's just sitting there at 30% not doing anything. So I wanted this to all work with one system, and that being Skunk Works. So let me go ahead and show you guys how I sort of wired up the desk so that one system could really kind of control the whole room. So we'll go ahead and start with the monitor. You guys saw us talk about this on our FreeSync video. This is the 34GK950F from LG. I wasn't kidding when I said this is my new favorite daily driver monitor. I took that from the studio right to my home, hooked it up to my mounted arm. It's a 17, well this can hold 17 pounds. The monitor is significantly less than that. Actually I think the arm holds like 22 pounds or something. But the monitor is significantly less than that. So I do have my DisplayPort 1.4 in here because we do need it for the 144 hertz um, 1440p ultra wide plus HDR. So we need that amount of bandwidth. So I'm using that cable. I do have a long uh, 10 foot USB cable on here for USB 3. So these ports do work if I need to plug anything in back here for any reason. Here's the power and it runs through the arm. As you can see, the arm is uh, you know full articulating so I can do anything I want with this, which is really nice. Still using the LG soundbar right here. I don't remember the model. It's one of the Dolby Atmos ones, but it doesn't really matter. I don't listen to this a whole lot. Usually I use headphones. Skunk Works, 
back in the house where it belongs. And you can see I kind of cared about the cable management here. And believe it or not, right now what you see, with the exception of the HMD for my Vive, everything is hooked up here. So I don't have my HDMI hooked up yet, so I'll be undoing these zip ties and bringing the HDMI uh, to the breakout box. So this is pretty much as tidy as it's gonna be, and I kind of like it this way because one of the things I hated about not using hubs is the fact that I just was constantly changing keyboard and mice and stuff. I wanted to try out different things, and it was a complete pain in the ass. So plugging things in and having everything zip tied back here or even using those Velcro straps was just a pain. So that's why I'm using two different, uh, what are these, seven port, right? Yeah, seven port USB 3.0 hubs. They are powered hubs, so we can plug things in here like our phones to charge, our mice, keyboard, and all that sort of stuff. It's all wired under the table. We'll show you that in a second. But I've got another one over here right in front of Phil as you can see, and this is specifically to plug in my racing simulator right here. So because it's on that side of the table, the racing sim can just plug into that and stay plugged in at all times, which means when I'm dealing with updates for like the game controller, because that's how Windows sees the Fanatec setup as a game controller. So that's always gonna stay up to date. Um, I decided to use the clamp for the monitor arm, kind of going bouncing around here on a couple different things, because I had an option. I could have taken this guy right here, and again, for a $59 arm, which you can buy on Amazon, I do have a link for an affiliate. Hopefully I'll remember to put that in there. If you are looking for a vase mount, you are not gonna find a better one for the price, in my opinion, than this guy. So you can use a clamp like this, which has a built-in wire channel to kind of keep things nice and tidy. And this gray cable here is a, an optical, so I'm using a spitif. I could have drilled right through the table, mounted this guy to the bottom of this, had this go through, and then this would clamp on the bottom of the table like so. So the table would be in between, and then it would uh, probably be a bit more sturdy than it even is now. But the thing is, I didn't want to, this isn't gonna be a permanent setup for me, for the table. So I didn't want to drill any holes. Which is also why, if you take a look at the keyboard and mouse, normally like my setup in the office, I have a hole drilled right here and everything passes through to a hub underneath the desk. These are just zip tied together up here and going under Skunk Works, coming back around and plugged in right there. Because again, when I'm done with this and I actually determine what my full-time setup's gonna be, because I don't like the color, I don't like the wood grain color, I will be selling this table with the dining room chairs and all that stuff that it originally had because this was my dining room table before we moved into the new house. We got a new dining room table, this is now my desk. So I needed something that was sturdy enough to be able to hold the weight of Skunk Works, which is like 80 pounds, and then everything else, including me pounding on the desk when I keep losing in games because I suck. So that was kind of important to make sure I overcame that. Now welcome to the underside of my table where things get a little bit more intimate. No, I'm just kidding. So this is basically one of those uh, trays that you used to be able to get with the Galant system from Ikea. I don't think you can buy this anymore, but it's just screwed into the actual table. And the nice thing about this dining room table is the fact that it's real wood. It's not particle board or pressed MDF or anything like that. It's real wood, so it's real sturdy. Everything's mounted under here. My power strip, you know, my surge protector, um, everything for power runs to this. And then this has one cable that runs to the wall. And then, yeah, so it gives me a place to just sort of shove things out of the way that don't need to be tied down, keeps things from dangling on my feet. When you walk into the room, you don't see wires hanging under the desk. Everything is right here. And on this side, which I haven't tacked it down yet, is the main power cable for Skunk Works as well as our ethernet cable. So that's one of the things we're gonna get done today. We're gonna neaten that up. We're gonna install the HTC Vive. I've got some channel, uh, some wire channeling, which will hopefully make that nice and neat as it mounted to the wall. And then hopefully by the end of this video, the simulator will be running and then we'll show Phil how to actually drive. <laughs> so these wire channels, it's the same thing I did this if you saw my HTC Vive setup in my old house. I use these and I go right along the edge of our window frame here, because they're a lot less obvious. So I'm gonna have the first lighthouse mounted up here, and then it comes straight down, and have it come over, and then right to this plug here. And if you're wondering why my wall looks like this, it's because this room didn't originally have ethernet and although this house does have a ruckus system wired throughout it in the ceiling for wireless uh, to get rid of dead spots, you only get like 450 to 500 megabit, um, even through 5G. And so that's like half of what I'm actually paying for. So one of the ethernets that go into the great room come in actually through the ceiling, because this is the second story up here, come through the ceiling and then drop over into the great room and down. So what we do is we cut a hole in the ceiling here grabbed one of those ethernets, cut, spliced, uh, you know, two connectors, which is not recommended, but we had no, no other option to be honest. And then we dropped it down here, cut a hole in the firewall, dropped it over here. And then, so I've got actual wired ethernet. So now I get my full 
gigabit or about 920 megabytes of the gigabit with all 12 wireless connections that are constantly running in the house like my security system, my video cameras that are constantly going to my DVR and all that sort of stuff for my home security. So even with that stuff constantly sending data to the cloud, I still get like 920 megabytes of that gig with 12 devices running in terms of security. So yeah, I'm happy to say the least. But anyway, this is just uh, like a half inch channel that you can get from Lowe's or Home Depot or whatever your favorite home improvement store is. And then, like I said, I just run these right along the edge of, in fact, I can do this this way. Oh no, it's just taking the tape off now. Okay guys, we'll be back. <laughs> Dang it. It's my heat gun. So clearly we got everything working as I'm struggling to drive my ZL1 around the Nürburgring. But that's okay, this isn't, this one isn't the one LE, so it's not supposed to handle really good. But as you can see, uh, the setup actually wasn't so bad. I mean, it, it was pretty flawless this time in terms of, I think that's kilometers, right? No, that's miles per hour. We're going very foosh. I meant to do that. <laughs> um, everything's tracking flawlessly. I was worried that this lighthouse up here was gonna be too tall and I was gonna be below it. But uh, everything's working pretty good. Uh, Phil got to drive in it. Phil, what do you think? I'm a little too short for the setup though, but it, it's awesome. Yeah, the Fanatec setup. If you guys haven't seen that video, like I said, I'll tr I probably won't leak it because I'll forget. But if you just go to my channel and look up uh, racing simulator or simulator, you'll find it that way. So now I can actually join my uh, racing group with the Nissan Challenge guys that I drive with in real life. They uh, have an online racing uh, kind of a little group as well. And they do project cars and the Seto Corsa and they drive off track, just like real life. But what I have left to do though, obviously, is I have to paint the cable channeling that I'm using there for the lighthouses. Um, the problem with the lighthouses, quite honestly, is they're black and they got black cables and I've got light gray walls. And so it looks terrible. And although many people are gonna be more functional over form, I don't see why you can't have both. And then since I've got a nice new man cave game room here, I obviously want it to, uh, Damn, this car spins a lot, just like real life. Um, I obviously want it to look good and pass the wife test as well as my own test. So I'm gonna re be repainting those because I have leftover paint. And uh, those channels which I got, you can like get at any Home Depot or Lowe's or any Ace Hardware or whatever hardware store you may have local to you. And uh, you can see that just with a little bit of planning, you can make it look good. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. And uh, this was just a way for me to get some work done while also doing something for myself. And with that, I'm gonna go ahead and let this ZL1 crash. Dude, this car is not like fun to drive on here. <laughs>